Hey, what's going on everybody? This is James with Franklin Armory, and today we're going to show you how to install our new PCC1 trigger into a Ruger PC carbine. So first step before working on your firearm, make sure there's no ammo around you, no magazine inserted, no ammo in the chamber. Make sure you've got a set of safety glasses handy. So to start the installation project, the next step So when you get to this stage, there's two pins holding the fire control group into the receiver. So take a, take a small flathead punch, locate the two pins, and just push them out. They're not under very much pressure, so they should come out pretty easily. With the fire control group out, you can set the receiver aside. Next step of disassembly, set the unit to fire. Go ahead and press the trigger and let the hammer go all the way forward and that will allow you to take out the hammer spring. With the hammer spring out, use that same small punch, in this case it's a 1 8 punch, and remove your hammer pin. Hammer comes right out. Next step, remove the trigger pin and make sure that you don't allow the trigger plunger to go flying. So put your finger against the trigger. It should help you keep it in place. Now you can slowly let your finger forward and capture the plunger. And remove the trigger. So we supply you a new plunger spring, so go ahead and save your plunger spring for the original part and set it aside. Next step is a little tricky, getting the selector out. What you're going to need to do is push the selector to about the middle of the housing and rotate it with your hands in order to get rid of the tension against the plunger. Once you've rolled halfway past the plunger, you can start to push it out. And pro tip here, if you don't want to lose any parts, push it against your table and then push it out. That way the detent doesn't get lost and they are small. So in order to remove the selector, depress the selector about halfway in between where it wants to be, between the detent. Grab it with your fingers and rotate it about a half a turn. And pro tip here, if you don't want to lose your parts, press the unit against the table, take the same punch you've been using, and just start to push the selector out. And it will slide right out. Set it aside. Now you didn't lose any parts. With the safety selector removed, you should be left with more or less a blank trigger pack outside of the factory bolt catch. Don't remove that, you won't need to do that for this process. The parts that you're going to be reusing are the two receiver pins, a hammer pin, a trigger pin, and the trigger spring plunger. Now in your binary kit, you'll be supplied with a new safety selector detent and spring, a new trigger spring, a new selector, the trigger, new hammer, new hammer spring, and two hammer spacers. So the first step will be made a lot easier with just a small set of tweezers. You'll need to locate the hole in the trigger pack where the original safety selector detent and spring was pulled from. Go ahead and grab the safety selector detent and spring as one unit. Drop it down into the hole. Be careful that they don't miss. 
and it will look something like this, just sitting in the hole. Next step, locate your 1 16th Allen key that's supplied in the kit and remove one lever from your selector. Now in this case, the lever that you want to remove has a flat side that goes all the way to the edge, butts up against your lever. That flat side is going to be the side that goes towards the safety selector detent. With the trigger pack facing forward, push in from right to left. So flat side facing down towards the detent. You'll see it touch the detent. It's handy to have a larger flat punch for this step. Simply push the detent down with your punch. Push the selector over the detent. Okay. So with the selector on top of the detent, put a little bit of force on top of the selector, push it the rest of the way through the hole. At this point, you should hear it positively click into place. You should be able to hear clicks as you rotate and it should have three positive positions. So we'll run through that one more time at a little bit of a closer angle here so you can see what's going on. So use your tweezers to grab the safety selector detent and spring. Let it down into the hole at the back of the trigger pack. Remove the lever that's connected to a flat side that goes all the way up to the lever. There's only one side like that. Front of the trigger pack facing forward, going from right to left, with the flat side facing down towards the detent. You'll feel it stop against the detent. Take a flat punch and push down on the detent until it's all the way into the hole and put pressure against that selector until you feel it ride on top of that detent. Now this part can be a little tricky too. You'll need to leverage against that detent and lift up on the end that's sticking out so you can push it through the other side. And when you're in, you'll hear a click. And to test that it's still in the right position, rotate it. There should be three distinct positions, a safe, a semi, and a binary position. And if all those three feel like solid positions, you've got the selector installed properly, and you can move on to the next step. Okay, so moving on to the next step, selector is in place. We'll be installing the trigger and the trigger spring, trigger spring plunger. So locate the hole at the rear of the trigger guard. Take your trigger spring plunger and put it onto the trigger spring, and slide that down into the hole at the rear of the trigger guard. Push it all the way down with your finger. Holding that in place, take the trigger, slide that down into the trigger pack, into the housing, and use the trigger to capture that detent. And use your trigger pin to hold the trigger in place. And that pin should go through with, with pretty little effort. Test to make sure that everything feels good. Everything's working great. Next step, we'll be installing the hammer. So you'll need the hammer, the hammer spring, and both of the hammer spacers. With the spur on the back of the hammer being the rear, 
take the hammer spring, slide it into place. Install the hammer spacers with the notched cutout side against the hammer. And hold them in place with your fingers. So you should have something that looks like this. Now, make sure that these two hammer legs are sitting on top of the trigger pin and not below. So squeeze these two spacers together, start sliding it into place. And when you get low enough, you should be able to see that the hole is aligned with the trigger pack and slide your hammer pin through. Again, it doesn't take a whole lot of effort to push that through. Take the hammer and cock it, and it should feel nice and smooth. At this point, you can test to make sure everything's functioning properly by putting the selector into binary. In this case, it already is. Make sure that the hammer doesn't fly forward, so block it with your thumb, pull the trigger. Keeping the trigger depressed, recock it, release the trigger. With the hammer cocked and the trigger depressed, you should be able to roll the selector into semi and release the trigger without the hammer firing. And that should function as a semi-auto setting. You should be able to roll it into safe and the trigger will not fire. The final step of this installation, you'll need to remove the one lever from your safety selector so we can slide it into place in, into the receiver. So go ahead and carefully remove that lever with your 116 sound key. Lay the receiver onto its back and align the two receiver holes with the two holes in the trigger pack. You have two receiver pins left over from the installation process and slide those right through the receiver. You'll need the stock and slide that into place. Your 5 30 seconds Allen key. Go ahead and retighten the stock screws. Now you can go ahead and reinstall your safety selector levers. All right, with everything reinstalled, receiver attached to the stock, we're going to go through the function checks that are located inside of your installation manual. So step one, ensure that the hammer is cocked to the sear. Move selector to safe mode, so safe mode. Pull the trigger, trigger should not move. Move the safety selector back to semi mode, hammer should not fall forward. Step two is to function check the transition from semi to safe. 
So ensure that the hammer is cocked on the sear. Move the safety selector to semi mode. Pull the trigger and keep it held back. The hammer should fall forward and impact the firing pin. With the trigger still held back, recock the hammer on the disconnector. While turning the selector back to safe mode, the hammer should not move. Release the trigger. The hammer should fall to the sear. Step three, function check semi mode. Ensure that the hammer is cocked on the sear. Pull the trigger and keep it held back. The hammer should fall forward and impact the firing pin. With the trigger still held back, recock the hammer. It should now be held back by the disconnector. Release the trigger. The hammer should fall to the sear and not to the firing pin. Step four, function check the transition from semi to binary scenario one. So move the selector to semi mode. Ensure that the hammer is cocked. Pull the trigger and keep it held back. The hammer should fall forward and impact the firing pin. With the trigger still held back, recock the hammer on the disconnector. Hold the trigger back while turning the safety selector to binary mode. The selector should not be able to return to binary mode. The hammer should not have fallen while manipulating the selector. Now release the trigger. The hammer should fall off the disconnector and be caught by the sear. Step five, function check the transition from semi to binary scenario two. Move the selector to semi mode. Ensure the hammer is cocked. Pull the trigger and keep it held back. Hammer should fall forward and impact the firing pin. With the trigger still held back, recock the hammer on the disconnector. The selector should not be able to fully turn to binary mode. Continue to maintain pressure on the selector. Release the trigger while continuing to maintain pressure on the selector. The hammer should not move. Now release pressure on the selector. The hammer should fall off the disconnector and be caught by the sear. Step six, function check binary mode scenario one. Ensure the hammer is cocked on the sear. Move the safety selector to binary mode. Pull the trigger and keep it held back. The hammer should fall forward and impact the firing pin. Recock the hammer on the disconnector. Slowly release the trigger until the hammer falls to the firing pin. Keep your finger held at the point that the hammer fell forward. Recock the hammer on the disconnector. Release the trigger and the hammer should reset to the sear. Number seven, function check binary mode scenario two. Ensure that the hammer is cocked on the sear. Move the safety selector to binary mode. Pull the trigger and keep it held back. The hammer should fall forward and impact the firing pin. Recock the hammer on the disconnector. Slowly release the trigger until the hammer falls to the firing pin. Keep the trigger held at the point where the hammer fell forward. Recock the hammer and the disconnector. Pull the trigger in and the hammer should not fall. Release the trigger slowly until the hammer falls to the firing pin. While keeping your finger at the breaking point, recock the hammer. Release the trigger again and it should reset to the sear. Final step, step eight. Function check intermodal travel from binary mode to semi mode. Ensure the hammer is cocked on the sear. Ensure that the safety selector is in binary mode. Pull the trigger and keep it held back. The hammer should fall forward and impact the firing pin. Recock the hammer on the disconnector. Continue to hold the trigger back and rotate the safety selector from binary mode to semi mode. Release the trigger. The hammer should fall off the disconnector and rest on the sear. So with your function checks complete, we're ready to throw on the binary stickers and complete the installation. So your stickers are reversible. Make sure that when you put them on, the binary side is facing forward. 
and just stick them right above your selector. With your stickers on, your barrel back on, you're ready to go enjoy your trigger. All right, that concludes our installation of the PCC1 binary trigger. If you want to find out more about this trigger or any of the other binary triggers we have in our lineup, visit franklinarmory.com and be sure to subscribe to our Facebook page, Instagram and Twitter, and have a great day.